In this project, we're gonna deploy an HTTP server in a Docker container using the Amazon ECS. To do so, we're gonna build this architecture step by step. Our project consists of five steps. To implement the project in this video, please ensure the prerequisites below. First step. Create a cluster. A cluster is a logical grouping of your ECS resources. You need a cluster to deploy a container. You can use a cluster to isolate resources used by your application. The Amazon ECS manages your cluster in a VPC. In this video, we're gonna use the default VPC in your AWS account. To create a cluster, open your terminal and type the following command to create your cluster using the AWS CLI. The first part sets the service you're gonna use. The second part is the action that you wanna request. In this case, we wanna create a cluster. The argument is the cluster name. Hit enter and wait for the return. The CLI returns the cluster description. Use the key Q in your keyboard to leave the description screen. You can check your cluster is properly created with the following command. Second step. Register task definition. A task definition is a JSON file that describes the configuration for your Docker container. As the ECS cluster, a task definition is a regional resource. You can download the task definition for this video from our GitHub repository. Check out the link in the video description. Our task definition sets the image we're gonna use for our container the port mapping, and computational resources. In your terminal, type and run the following command to register your task definition. The argument for this action is the file path. In this example, our file is in the current directory. Hit enter and wait for the return. The CLI returns the task description. Again, use the letter Q in your keyboard to leave the description screen. You can check your task is properly registered with the following command. Third step. Create service. A service instantiates a task definition, creating a task. You can understand a task as a running container. A service is responsible for managing your container, as an auto-scaling service is responsible for managing EC2 instances. Your container is instantiated in a subnet. In this video, we are using a public subnet in our default VPC. We also use AWS Fargate as ECS capacity provider. The AWS Fargate is a serverless service responsible for running our container. You can also use an EC2 instance as a capacity provider if you prefer. A security group protects external access to our container. In this video, we use the default security group provided with our default VPC. Our service needs the port 80 available, as previously defined in the task definition. Therefore, ensure that your security group enables access to the port 80. To use a public subnet and an existing security group, we need to retrieve their IDs first. Therefore, in your terminal, Type and run the following command to retrieve the list of subnets available in our VPC. Take note of the subnet ID. 
Next, type and run the following command to retrieve the list of security groups available in your VPC. Take note of the security group ID. Finally, type the following command to create a service. First, we identify the cluster where the service is going to run into. Second, we name the service. Then, we identify the task definition that carries our container configuration. Note that the task definition has a version. Next, we set the number of containers we want running. We indicate our capacity provider. Finally, we set our network configuration. Identifying the subnet and security group we previously identified. A last detail, we enable a public IP as we want external users to access the service running in our container. Hit enter and wait for the return. The CLI returns the service description. You can check your service is properly created with the following command. Fourth step. Test. In this step, we're gonna play the role of web users trying to access our HTTP server. To test the running container, we need to retrieve the public IP assigned to our task. In our example, a task represents a running container. A task has an elastic network interface, which, in turn, has an elastic IP associated. We need to identify this information by retrieving data from our service. Type and run the following command to list running tasks in your cluster. Then, use the task ARN to retrieve details from running task. Take note of the NEID. Finally, type and run the following command to get the public IP. Take note of the public IP. Type the public IP in your browser to open the default web page in the server. If you cannot this page, please check if your security group has an inbound rule that allows access to port 80. Last step. Clean up. This step terminates all resources created in this video. We start by deleting the service. To check running services, type and run the following command. Type and run the following command to delete the service. We can check the service was deleted by listing running services. Type and run the following command. To check existing clusters, type and run the following command. Then, delete your cluster with the following command.
You can check the cluster was deleted by listing existing clusters. Type and run the following command. Finally, for deregistering the task definition, list existing task definitions with the following command. Then, deregister the task definition. and check the list of existing task definitions.